ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Kogush. I'm here with Barry Klein of the Houston Property Owners Association, and he is working on some very critical reforms about local control that bring power back to the community level and away from centralized control. Barry, tell us about what your organization is about. Well, the Houston Property Rights Association was organized about 25 years ago to force an election so we could pr protect our status as a non-zone city, and we managed, were successful doing that. And this same tactic can be used across the country to change law along a more libertarian line. We have 5,400 home rule cities in the country. Home rule cities have charters that you can amend by citizen action. So you go out and get, and like in Texas, we need 5% of registered voters to sign a petition. So you can get propositions on the local ballot. So you can repeal bad laws, you can make good ones. And I argue that we can actually change the zeitgeist by doing this hundreds of times across the country every year. And as you're doing this, you're building a coalition of individuals who like liberty and appreciate it. And you can actually make it easier for people to run for office as libertarians or a free marketeer of any stripe because now they've built a local credential as an activist who knows how to be successful and has the right attitude. Now, in Houston, it is the largest municipality in the, in the country that has no zoning, is that correct? That is correct. Now, we have other regulations. We're not regulating. We have building codes. But we, yeah, but we do not have formal zoning. Now, and, and how has that benefited Houston? Well, it means that people can, are more, can more easily uh, turn their home into a business, as many people want to do. Uh, commercial facilities are closer to one's home because they're not artificially separated from where the homes are. And it means that everything is less costly because it's easier to get a permit to open a business. Now, you said there's a battle, was it 93 in Houston to try to take this away? Who was trying to take it away and why? Who, who, who in Texas hates freedom so much? Well, there's always people who think the city could be better if we were more regulated. And for many years, politicians were always able to say, well, I can fix that problem you're talking about, but we don't have zoning, so I, don't, I can't fix it. So there was this pent up idea that zoning would fix all our problems. And so finally somebody got in front of that idea and began to push it and, and so the city hall capitulated. We're getting ready to adopt an ordinance. So I got together with some friends and pushed the idea of an election to stop it. Actually, the initial idea was to reverse it and force an election, but they were so slow in getting their ordinance written that we actually got a chance to vote on the ordinance itself. But we also turned in our signatures and we had a second election two months later, this is 94, to require an election on any new zoning proposals. So in the future, if they want to bring zoning to Houston, they have to write the whole ordinance, put it on the ballot, and give us six months to study it. That idea has actually been embraced by two close-by cities near Houston, so they have that same high level of protection. So it was city council members trying to increase their power so that they could appeal to specific special interest groups and get bribes to be able to control where people are allowed to have businesses. I one council member who wanted to actually use that as a stepping stone into the mayor's job. And he got in front of a coalition of civic clubs. And that's what put pressure on city council and the mayor at the time, who wasn't really warm to the idea, but she felt pressured. So we were able to use this petition process to get the issue on the ballot and then stop it. Well, here's to Houston, here's to Texas for not letting that happen. But this is something that people all over the country deal with as one of the greatest affronts to freedom, that you can't do what you want on your own property. And you can reverse that. I, I recommend every city should, should have a, a local sunset commission. All the city rules and regulations go through a periodic review every three years or five years. So all the victims of a zoning code can come in and tell their stories. And you can bring in technical information from the economists who are basically unhappy with zoning and put, and put that in front of the commissioners and maybe get some reversal or weakening of these regulations, including zoning. And hopefully building codes eventually as well. Now, uh, uh, this is something that I've dealt with myself. For those of you who don't know my story, at Freedom Farm in Arizona, building without a permit, just getting out there and saying, this is my property, I'm going to do what I want with it. And then I end up get, getting threatened with hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines. And even though you might hear of individual cases like that that are somewhat sensational, what you don't hear about is all of these stories that you never get to, to, that never get to happen in the first place because someone goes, oh, well, I was going to start a business, but because of zoning it was too expensive, or I had to move, or whatever. And, and, and this, is, this is so critical and, and really responsible for a major part of the prosperity that Houston has experienced, correct? 
I won't argue that. I, I think it, it, the prosperity is spread more broadly because it's easier to start a business and to enjoy the benefits of, of having lower cost uh, goods and services to purchase. <coughs> we, we're, we're driven by the national economy and by the fact we're oil based, that kind of thing. But it's better for the ordinary citizen to not have these regulations. Somebody who's already established, has a successful business, they can be protected by zoning because it keeps a low, the, 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 the It keeps competition away. Right, it does yeah. keep competition away. So it makes life better for us. We have more liberty than other cities have, but it's not the driver, it's not the primary driver to our economy. Well, it's an important thing that allows for competition, which is absolutely critical to economic development. So do you have a website you'd recommend where people can get more resources about this? Because I want to say, getting involved in your community where you can make a real change, being an activist that can make an impact on people's lives. I mean, this is something that I'm looking at working on in Yavapai County in Arizona. This is something that I know a lot of people that I've, I've talked to all over the country really just rail against. Because when you say, you can't do this with your own property, I mean, that's, that's the, one of the most offensive affronts to freedom. I don't have a website, but there are people like Randall O'Toole who works with the Cato Institute. He does a lot of good research on that. He, he bills himself as the anti-planner. He's got a blog. You can go look for that. Reason Foundation is good. Uh, FEE, the Foundation for Economic Education. Uh, several other free, free market think tanks periodically have material along this line. Now, i got to point out one more thing. Barry was a little bit reluctant to do this interview. Why is that, Barry? Years ago, I got uh, struck by a rare disease called Ramsey Hunt syndrome, and it damaged the nerves on the left side of my face. So I've got tinnitus, and I've got a little bit of facial paralysis. But he cares about this message enough to bring it to you and do this interview. I had, I had to tell him that, don't worry, the audience cares more about the information. So I hope you value this. I hope you'll share it. Thank you so much, Barry. You're quite welcome. Thank sure. you. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com, as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your post and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.